and D.W. had been in the drugstore a long time. For heaven's sake, D.W. said. This store is full of presents. Pick one and let's go. It has to be just right, said Arthur. I want Santa to like it. Well, hurry up, said D.W. I want to get home and see if Grandma's there and how many presents she brought me. At home, D.W. added ten more things she wanted to her Christmas list and copied it over in red pencil. Arthur and D.W. cheered when they heard the car in the driveway. Grandma, are there presents in there for me? asked D.W. Grandma, do you think Santa would like new mittens or gloves? asked Arthur. Whatever happened to hello? I'm glad to see you, asked Grandma Thora. After dinner, everyone relaxed. Look, said D.W., I teached Killer a trick. Taught, said Grandma, you taught Killer a trick. But D.W. didn't hear. She had seen something on television to add to her list. Arthur, what's the matter? asked Grandma. I haven't found the right gift for Santa, said Arthur. Only two shopping days left reminded D.W. The next day, Arthur, D.W., and their friends went shopping. Killer went too. Arthur searched the entire store and still couldn't find the perfect gift for Santa. What's the big problem? asked D.W. I can see a hundred things I want. Let's go tell Santa. Santa? What would you like for Christmas? asked Arthur. Ho, 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 laughed Santa. You just leave the giving to me. D.W. had her picture taken, patting Santa's tummy. Buster was next. Santa, be careful coming down the chimney at our house. My parents always forget to put out the fire. Ho, 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 said Santa. Don't worry, I'll use the front door. Then it was Francine's turn. Have you been a good little girl? asked Santa. Oh, yes, smiled Francine. I'm always good. Always? asked Santa. Afterward, Buster treated them all to ice cream. Arthur could hardly finish his root beer float. He had only one more shopping day. Look, said Francine. Santa eats ice cream. I'll have a banana split with six scoops of bubblegum ice cream, said Santa, with double hot fudge, whipped cream, and nuts. I'll say he eats ice cream, said D.W. At home, Arthur asked his family for help. How about a nice, colorful tie, said Father. Aftershave is always a good gift, said Mother. I bet Santa could use some toasty, warm long johns, said Grandma. Arthur, you're taking this shopping too seriously, said D.W. Just do what I do. Get everyone the same thing. That afternoon, Everyone was getting ready to go caroling, but Arthur didn't have time for Christmas carols. Time was running out. Please come along, begged D.W. I'll be the only kid, and besides, Mrs. Tibble always gives us a present and hot chocolate. Arthur went window shopping instead, hoping that would give him an idea for Santa's present. Santa was ho-ho-hoing and drinking a diet root beer at the car wash. Moments later, Santa was at the golden chopstick, eating sub-gum chow goo. Santa must have run to the deli at the corner of North and Main. The waitress shouted Santa's order to the cook. Can't 
catch a fish, hit it with a ride, put a pair of shoes on it. Santa sure eats a lot, thought Arthur. Finally, Arthur went home. He hadn't seen a single thing in any of the store windows he thought Santa would like. Santa was on TV, eating Papa Piper's pickled peppers. That's it, said Arthur. He started making his list. Arthur counted his money. D.W., he said in his sweetest voice. Okay, how much do you need? asked D.W. But only if you promise to stop being such a grouch. Attention, supermarket shoppers. Check out the special on Christmas candy in aisle five. The next morning, Arthur gave D.W. half of his list. He took the other half. D.W. had to keep Killer out of the kitchen while Arthur made Santa's present. What's all that noise? asked Father. Arthur is making a mess, reported D.W. The kitchen door opened and Arthur sneezed. <laughs> Mom, how many cups of pepper and pickled peppers? he asked. Maybe I should help, said Mother. No, please, said Arthur. I want to make Santa's present myself. Just tell me how many sticks of gum in sub gum chow goo. Poor Santa, said D.W. Hours later, Arthur whistled while he set the table for Santa. What's that? asked Father. Pickled peppers, a hot fudge sundae on bubblegum ice cream, and sub gum chow goo. I sort of combined Santa's favorite foods, Arthur explained. What's that big lumpy thing that's moving? asked Grandma. A pizza to go, said Arthur, with everything on it. If you want Santa to come, you better go to bed, said Mother. If we want Santa to come, thought D.W., we better do something about that food. D.W. couldn't fall asleep. I have to do something, she thought. Poor Arthur works so hard, but if Santa gets one whiff of Arthur's present, he'll never set foot in the dining room, much less eat any of it. Careful to miss the squeaky step, D.W. tiptoed downstairs in the dark. The next morning, Arthur was the first one up. Santa ate it all, he cried, and he left a note. Dear Arthur, you were so nice to take the time to find out my favorite foods and make them. Thank you. You also teach me about the Christmas spirit. Love, Santa. P.S. Aren't you lucky to have such a nice little sister? Arthur's Christmas is brought to you by Little Brown and Company bring you all of the Arthur adventures. Explore more with Arthur on the PBS Kids video app.